have you ever searched for mock-ups from other Etsy sellers and noticed how so many of the exact same products and shirts in particular can look drastically different? And while Etsy is often my favorite place for mock-ups because there are so many other great shops out there, and quite frankly, the styles are just better for so many different aesthetics, the differences in mock-ups can be confusing. In particular, if you're selling with print on demand and therefore don't keep any inventory on hand of every single color of every single shirt that you sell, how are you supposed to know what's accurate? After all, if your customer orders a colored shirt and think that they're getting this, when they actually end up getting this, you might be facing a negative review, my friend. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy, and as the owner of a multiple six-figure businesses, including Etsy print-on-demand shops, my goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey, scale your business faster, and ultimately help you thrive with print-on-demand. For today's video, I want to show you the wildly easy way to see all of the correct colors from all of your favorite apparel brands so that you can make sure that you've got the correct colors in your mock-ups for all of your apparel products. And by the way, this method is totally free. I also want to show you the language that you can use in your listings to help you cover all the bases when there really is color variances in screens and different views that do still naturally occur. And if you find out that the mock-ups that you've already got have colors that are a little bit off, I'll also show you some quick tips on how to fix it. So what is my secret to accurate mock-ups? Sample brochures directly from the manufacturers of the major brands that I use. Most major brands like Gildan and Bella Canvas allow you to request these sample booklets that give you details on the colors, the fabrics, the sizing, and more. In some cases, they'll even give you details about which blends and which product lines work best for different types of printing processes. For example, DTG or direct to garment printing versus sublimation. So how do you get your hands on these? Let's walk through some of the big ones from Gildan, Bella and Canvas, and Comfort Colors. Let's start with Comfort Colors. And in case you didn't know it, Comfort Colors is actually owned by Gildan. So when you come to comfortcolors.com, you'll see both here. So let's start with Comfort Colors. When we are on the website, typically it's going to be in kind of an obscure location because they don't send these out to everyone. In this case, we've got a marketing tools button all the way at the bottom. So if we scroll through, you can either review it online, but again, the whole point is we wanna actually have something to hold in our hands. So for this case, we're going to click on order. When we're on this page, we can simply go to checkout and then you can either create an account or just check out as a guest. Once you've plugged in your shipping information, it doesn't cost anything, so the shipping is free. And then once you get to this confirmation page, you can simply click on place order. In the past, when I've ordered these booklets, it can sometimes take a couple weeks. So just keep that in mind as you're ordering them. Then we can click over to Gildan and it's the same process. And so typically I scroll down and then we'll be looking for that marketing link again. It is owned by the same distributors. It's in the same spot. So that makes it super easy. So we'll essentially just repeat the process for Gildan. So we'll go here again, repeat the same process for adding in our address and checking out on this page. Once we're done with Gildan, then I'm going to head over to a Bella and Canvas and we'll repeat the same process. For Bella and Canvas, it's just bellacanvas.com. And when you get there, it'll drop you by default on this wholesale page. That is what we want. Retail is typically referring to more of that direct to consumer, whereas we are coming in as a business. And so this is the resources information that we want to see. For Bella and Canvas, there's a little bit different. They've got their resources available right at the top. We'll click on that. And if we look right over here to the right, right above where my picture is, you'll see that there is an order catalogs and color cards right under that shopping resources tab. When you click on that, you can see it's exactly what we want. And a Bell and Canvas is typically a little bit faster for shipping out their resources. And so you can see theirs is typically about two to five business days. And so just like with Gilded and Comfort Colors, we'll add our information in here. See with Bella and Canvas that they give you a couple options when you're ordering. One is for the catalog, and that is for their What's New books, and that really just goes through some of the different products and offerings that they have in a little bit more detail, which is nice to have, so it doesn't hurt to do that, and again, it's all free. And then number of color cards, this is the important one. So this is the one that will have the color chart to help you see exactly what those colors look like on those little swatches. Once you've got your information filled in, you can go ahead and submit that. And then again, they'll get that order to you. 
Now remember with color swatches, they are just small little swatches. So it's not the full item. It's just a small little square that you get on these little booklets. So if you're wanting to see a really large full size sample, that is definitely one that you'll need to find as a sample. Some great resources if you just need to order a couple of them. Jibby Shirts is a great resource for blanks. I've used them in the past and they even have a mobile app and you can get some really affordable blanks to see what they actually look like or if you wanted to take your own mock-ups. But for the purposes of color charts, again, you get a nice small little square so you can see exactly what that color looks like and it will give you a better sense of what's accurate on your mock-up and what's just completely off. Speaking of colors being way off, what do you do if you find out that your colors in your mock-ups are not quite accurate based on what you're seeing in the color swatch? First of all, if the difference isn't huge, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it. There's going to be natural variances in your screen resolution, screen coloring, how certain people see things certain ways. There's always going to be a natural difference there. What we're looking for is not having wide gaps in what the mock-up looks like versus what the actual product looks like. Significant differences there can definitely be a problem for your customer. Here's an example of one. So this page is for the Comfort Colors Terracotta t-shirt. As you scroll through, you can see that there are wide variances in what these mock-ups actually look like for seemingly the same exact shirt. For example, this one looks very pastel. This one looks a little more subdued. This one's a lot brighter and lighter. This one's very much a darker, almost more of a melon color. As we keep scrolling, I've got one that's very light and almost washed out looking. And again, if we look at even all three of these, all three of these are wildly different colors of the same exact shirt. So for your customer who's expecting perhaps this color and it comes out more like a subdued salmon color, that might be a problem. Some customers may not care and that's great, but trust me when I say it, there are customers out there that are very particular about what they've ordered and what they're expecting to get, especially with a more premium product like Comfort Colors, which comes with a higher price tag. So what happens if you've already purchased a bunch of mock-ups and come to find out they're a little bit off in their colors? Well, one option is just to leave it as is. Some sellers prefer to stick to a very strong aesthetic, and so sometimes they really have that boho vibe, or it might be more of a beach vibe, or a darker gothic vibe, and that's simply part of their branding. And that can be okay, but just remember that for most sellers, the problem will be that these mock-ups are heavily filtered, which means that what you and the customer see is not what the customer will actually get. The good news though is that that doesn't mean you can't use those mock-ups, they might just need a little bit of adjustment. So when I have a mock-up that I really like and I need to make some small changes to it, this can very easily be done right in Canva. So you can see I've got all of my comfort colors here, I keep them in one file, and I've got this one here that I have not done any editing to. And so as I look at this, and as I look at the color chart that I've got for terracotta and what it should look like, this is actually a little bit too warm for an orange color. It needs to be a little bit softer and have a little bit more of a lighter salmon appearance. And so what we can do within Canva, once we've got it uploaded in here, we can go to edit photo and then we'll come up here to adjust. You don't need a pro account or anything like that. This is just standard photo editing that's available in Canva. And then what we can do is with this whole image, I will actually bring the color tone down a little bit. And as I do that, it will mute those warm tones a bit and I will adjust it so that it looks a bit closer to what I'm seeing on this color swatch. So that looks pretty good there. It may not look significant for you as you're viewing this on your screen, but it does change the appearance a bit. We can also play around with contrast if we need to subdue anything a little bit or if we want to enhance it. I use this adjust tool quite a bit depending on the mockups that I get because again, some of them need a little more adjustment than others. You can also brighten it up if it feels a bit too dark. And you can also play around with shadows and that will, again, subdue things just a little bit depending on, again, what you're working with in your mockup. 
Again, there's no right or wrong on these. We're not reselling these mock-ups. So we're able to go in and adjust them to meet our needs. And in doing so, it will help us give a much more accurate view in our listing photos of the product that the customer will be receiving. And it may not look significant, the subtle changes that you've seen me make here in Canva, and that's okay, but I will show you if I right click on this and I detach it from the background, and then I've actually got the original up here. And if I do that, you can see that there is a difference here and this is a much softer version of a, this one with some of those yellow warm tones turned down a bit to give a more accurate view of what this will look like in person. Especially with comfort colors which do have more of that washed pigment dyed look to them. It's important to make sure that you've got some accurate mock-ups that you're working with for your designs. Now, even after you've made adjustments to your mockups in Canva or whatever editing software that you use, there's still bound to be slight variances in what people actually see on their screen when they're scrolling through the search and when they're viewing your product on Etsy. This can be due to a variety of things, including different types of screens. Some people have their screens set to different tones and some people just view colors a little bit differently. And so the other little piece that I like to include in my Etsy listing is simply a disclaimer that what they see on their screen can be sometimes slightly different than what they get in person. So when I'm in Etsy and I'm on the listing that I'm working on, you can see I've got my normal information here as part of my listing in terms of what type of material it is, care instructions. I also have a note in there that it is made with a direct -to garment process and what that means in terms of a comparison between vinyl and screen print that so many people are used to using. If you haven't seen my video that goes into a deeper discussion on direct garment printing and how that can be different in setting customer expectations, I've linked that for you so make sure you check that out. But then the last thing I include in the listing is just talking about variances in color and size compared to what they might see on the computer screen. Again, does everyone read to the bottom of the listing description? Absolutely not but at least it's there and it's something that customers can refer to and I can refer to if I should ever receive a question or concern from a customer. I hope this quick tip has been helpful for you. If you want to learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print on demand business, make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss out on any upcoming content. And in the meantime, be sure to check out the dedicated playlist with my masterclass course that's right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here and I'll see you next time. And if you're looking for more helpful ways to continue the work and stay connected, I invite you to join me over on Patreon, where I provide a membership to get exclusive access to my Google Drive with all sorts of wonderful tools and resources that I've created and continue adding to every month. It's also a place to join conversations as I think about future content and how I can serve you with the most amount of value. I also hope that you'll smash that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on all the exciting upcoming content that I've got planned for this channel. And finally, I invite you to check out my brand new website where you can subscribe to my own email list, follow along on new blog content that I will be building, and access other freebies that I have available on there to support you on your journey.